So, other day I spoke about different aspects of this place called Badarik Ashram. And this place is very, very important. It's not very important. This place is not one of the most important place. This is the important place. Why? More important than Vrindavan. How it could be? Braja Pranapur was telling, Iskan devotees, they don't come here because this is place of Vishnu. We are interested with Krishna. Vishnu is Aishwarya Bhava. But we are more into Madhurya Bhava. So for Iskan devotees, this place is not so important. But I said this place is the most important place because this is the place where Srila Vyasadev, he revealed all the Vedic literatures, put it into written form. Vrindavan is important for us, but we would not know about Vrindavan. If we would not know about Vrindavan, then what important it is. <laughs> because of this place, Vadarik Ashram, where Srila Vyasadev put all the Vedic literatures into written form, and especially Smad Bhagavatam knowledge was revealed to him. And his Gurudev Naradmani, he came here on the bank of uh, Saraswati. Uh, and he revealed, Bhagavatam was revealed at this very place. So this is not an ordinary place, uh, a very special place. So there was a king called Bisal. The Badri Narayan, also known as Badri Bisal. The king Bisal, he was attacked by his enemies. Somehow he lost everything. He lost everything. Then he came here to worship Vishnu. So Vishnu was very pleased with him. So Vishnu asked, what do you want? I'm very pleased with you. I'll fulfill your desire. He said, I want all my kingdom back. Then Vishnu said, oh, you want kingdom back? Then you have come to a wrong place. This is not a place to give your kingdom back to you. This is a place to take you back to Godhead, not to give you your material kingdom. Because this place is meant for moksha, for liberation, not for bondage. But you are asking back your opulence, your property, your kingdom back. But he was very stubborn. No, no, give my kingdom back. <laughs> so Vishnu was very pleased that how he has attached. <laughs> but out of affection, I don't know whether he gave her or not, but he said, okay, you are so dear to me. So from now, I will be known as Badri Bisal. So after that, of course, Badri Ashram is Bisal. Bisal means great. Past and great gigant. 
So there is one sense, Badri Bishal, Bhagavan is always great. Another is like because of this, Bishal king came here. So this is the place that we visited yesterday and day for yesterday. Saraswati River. This place is known as Samaprasa, something like that. Bhagavatam, Samapras, mentioned like that. So you know Srila Vyasadev. What is the name of Vyasadev? Krishna Devipayana Vyasa. Vyasa is not his name. Always called Vyasadev. But that is his title. Just like always you say Sutta Goswami. But the Sutta Goswami is not his name. His name is Ugrasrava. His name is Ugrasrava Sutta. His father's name was Romaharsana Sutta. The Romaharsana Sutta was so expert in reciting Puranas that if you listen from him, your hair will stand on end. Romaharsa. And actually, he was not a Brahman, he is a Sudra. A Sudra. Suttas are low caste people. But he was elevated to a position that all great Muni Rishis, they were hearing Puranas. When Balaram came, Ramahasan Rishi was sitting on Vyasasan giving class. And there is a system if you are giving class sitting on Vyasasan, if anybody comes, you should not get up out of respect to Vyasadev. But that doesn't mean when Bhagavan comes, so you will not get up. <laughs> so he did not get up, then Balaram tossed him with a blade of grass and killed him. And all Munirishi started to cry, lament, what will happen to us now? Who will make us to hear all the Puranas? Then Balaram said, as the father, so the son. The son represents the father. When Ramaharshan was killed, his father Ramaharshan was so expert in reciting Puranas, by hearing your hair shall stand on end. And he is a most able, perfect son. His name is Ugrasrava. What Ugrasrava means? Ugrasrava, Sraba means hearing, Ugra means very attentively. So he was very attentive in hearing. The so Balaram decided he is the perfect person to recite, take over the post of his father. In Sutta Goswami, in Ugrasrava Sutta, same way Sula Vyasadev. Vyasa is a post, Indri is a post. Every Mannantar, new Vyasadev comes. So this Mannantar Vyasadev name is Krishna Dvipayana Vyasa because he appeared in an island when Parasaramani was crossing the river and he could foresee that very special personality, this movement will come to this material world. Then immediately he married to a fisherman girl, Satyabhati, Satyabhati, uh, Mascagandha, her name. Then Vyasadev appeared deep in island, uh, Krishna Dipayana, the name became Krishna Devipayana Vyasa. So he is the son of uh, Parasar Muni and he is the incarnation of Krishna also. Uh, Satya Vesavatar. So Srila Vyasadev, he is not only residing here, there are many, many places in Odisha, different places. You will see these saintly personalities. All their, their activities spread all over India. Different parts of India you will go, Mark and Dairy, the same, same things you will listen in different parts. So that is the reason why our Sanatan Dharma is so deep rooted here. In ancient, original, ancient, very, very ancient times, this place was very enriched. Uh, with these kinds of spiritual environment, spiritual personalities. Then due course of time, um, by the help of our great Acharyas, this knowledge was brought all over India. That's a Puri Jagannath, Puri temple manifested. 
then tirupati temple manifested ramanacharya shankaracharya madhvacharya chaya everywhere so many all over india you will see these things but everything originated from this place so what basadev did what is his contribution why we have to be grateful to sri lankasadev you see that there is one time the vedic literatures were learned by people through hearing their hearing that by another name of veda it's called shruti shruti means hearing that time people some chanting sound is coming now they are translating Okay. So there is a Vedic time. There is no books written for. That is known as Shruti. Once hearing, they remember. Now we don't remember what we are doing tomorrow. This time we have to think. Now some time, but that time it is like this. Even if we. Hundred, few hundred years before, people also very good in memorizing things, remembering things. So when Sri Vyasa Dev, he realized he could foresee the degraded situation of this college of Manda Samanda Mata Yoh Manda Bhagya Yoh Padrita. You see, in Satya Yoh, here people could see God face to face. Tritya Yog, they could not see God face to face. Only Muni Rishi Yogis, through Dhyana, through Tapasya, they could meet Bhagavan. And Dwapara Yog, more degraded. Kali Yog, most degraded. That's why we can't see Bhagavan here. So Bhagavan mercifully, he appeared in his deity form, murti form for the people of Kali Yog. So the point is, he Veda. What Veda speaks? Who are followers of Veda? The Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Yehudi, Buddha. Who are followers of Veda? Ah, huh? Sanatan. How many of you are belong to Sanatan Dharma? Raise your hands. How many of you have Veda in your house? Anybody has read Veda? Anybody has seen Veda? Any of you have Veda in your house? Ah? Huh? Uposana, that is because Prabhupada now got some misapprehension. <laughs> Other is Veda, what it looks like, nobody knows. <laughs> so, there's nothing wrong with that. People may challenge, what kind of Hindu you are? You don't read Veda? You don't have Veda in your house? All Muslims have a Quran? All Christians have, they have a Bible? And how you are Hindu, you have no Veda in your house? They will definitely get in your case, isn't it? Nothing wrong with that. We don't have Veda in our house, nothing wrong. Because... Veda is not a literature to be read by everybody. Veda is not a literature that can be understood by everybody. Veda is not a literature to be understood by fertile brain. By reading Veda, Veda is spiritual transcendental knowledge which manifests in heart. That's every day what we chant. Guru Puja time, Divya Gyan, Hidya Prakashita, not Brain Prakashita. Hey, Veda can be understood not by reading. Veda can be understood through your sadhana. Through sadhana. And through the mercy of the spiritual personalities that will manifest. Even if in Vedic Yugas, that time when Veda was very prominently controlling the society. Now Veda is not controlling society. We Hindus by name follower of Veda. 
We are very far from Veda. But that time, even at that time, people are not reading Veda. All these great Muni Rishis, to the tapasya, to the sadhana, the Vedic transcendental knowledge is there in the sky always, in the ether. It is always there. Just like a TV center, the dance is going on. But that dance is here also going on. You know that? Modi is speaking here also. But is there in ether? But you can't see. But if you put a TV machine, you can see that. The same way, the transcendent knowledge is always there. That is called eternal, sanatan. The jnana is sanatan. But that will manifest through specific transformer. That box has to be there. So, Vedic time, that was happening. So, these munirishis, they understand. Mm -hmm. Then to general population, they would spread that knowledge. In the simple language, that they can understand. The way the great munirishis understand Bhagavan, ordinary, ordinary people can understand. Then they make it understandable to them. So, that was what was going on. But now point is, what Veda speaks about mostly? Do you know? Veda speaks 96% Karma Kanda, 4% Jnana Kanda. Bhakti, hardly you will find anything in Veda. Very rare. Because Bhakti is there. Essence of Veda is Bhakti, Essence of Veda is Krishna, Sarvaisya Veda is Ahamabha Vidya, Vedanta Krit Veda Vit Eva Saham. But you can't see Veda, you can't see Krishna in Veda. You can't see Bhakti in Veda. Just like in milk, ghee is there. Do you get taste of ghee in drinking milk? Do you get smell of ghee in drinking milk? No, the milk has to be churned by cowherd boy. Then he'll get ghee out of that. Same thing happened. Veda is there, but prominently Veda speaks Karma Kanda because people are mostly attracted to Karma Kanda, to good result, to bhoga, to sense gratification. So that's why. Veda speaks Karma Kanda. Veda speaks demigod worships. Kali, Shiv, Durga, Indra, Chandra, Varuna, all these things, Veda very prominently. Karma Kanda. Worship this demigod, you will get that. This demigod, that. Veda speaks like this, right? Chandra, uh, Chandra Loka, Indra Loka, all these Lokas. Because people are very much interested for that. People want to get something. They don't want anybody above them. Nobody wants to be controlled. Nobody, everybody thinks I am the boss. Everybody's goal is how I become the boss of everybody. Not Das, not the boss. So Bhagavan Krishna comes. You surrender to me. You worship me. I am Bhagavan. Oh, you are Bhagavan. I'll worship you, what shall I get? I'll bless you. Oh, you'll give us blessings. So then, out of, from your blessings, what will happen to us? If I'll bless you, whatever you have, you'll lose everything. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, hit the road, go. I'm not going to worship you. Bhagavan is in big trouble now. What to do? You understand we are suffering? He knows with material things, a bondage, a cause of sufferings, but we don't want to understand. We don't want to receive anybody. Nobody God. I am God. Then Bhagavan is thinking, oh, and you will worship to somebody if he will give you, but my nature is I will not give anybody. I will bear my nature to take away from you. <laughs> okay, okay, then you, I have a system, I have something for you. You worship these, these personalities, then you get something from them. 
then people will learn, oh, then I have to worship somebody. There is somebody higher than me who will give me. So they will become free from this understanding that I am the person. No. There's somebody higher to me. I have to depend upon. So Bhagavan wants to bring them understanding that somebody higher to you that you have to surrender. But that is karma kanda. Then jnana kanda is there also. Jnana kanda is higher than karma kanda. In karma kanda, where you will go? By following karma kanda, you will go to Swarga Loka. Then Bhagavan speaking in Upanishad. In Upanishad, Bhagavan speaking about jnana. In Upanishad, Bhagavan speaks about jnana. Everything against karma. Don't be bewildered to get into this path of karma. By following the path of yajna, karma kanda, you go to Swarga Loka. What will happen to you now? When you go to Swarga Loka, what will happen? Chinna Pune Martalaka Vesanti is very common. Verse are all is converted there now. But Mahavartha describing not only Kinnapunna Martalaka Bhisanti, you will just come back here. That when the result of your pious activity is finished, you will be thrown out of heavenly planets. Bhurlaka, Bhubalaka, Swarlaka. So Swargalaka, Martalaka, in between there is a Bhutalaka. All the ghosts are there. We know when the Punna finished, Martalaka Bhisham, but how you will come? That process has been described. When the result of your punya karma finish, you will be thrown out. Nobody die there. But they will throw you out. They will not die there. <laughs> they will throw you out. On the way, all the ghosts will eat you life. Then you will cry. Through the tears, the Atma will fall on the ground. And the Atma will enter through plants into the paddy, rice. Rice. Rice you eat, then the Purusha, Punsa, Reta, Kanasa, the Purushas, that from rice will go to the blood, from blood to the semen, from through semen will go to the womb of mother, then again will take birth. You like to go through process like this? will be thin, who will do like this. So Jnana Kandi is, they want to discourage, they want to discourage people, don't go through this difficult path. We have better path for you. <laughs> you don't have to come here. Uh, you just get moksha, mukti. But then they say moksha, mukti means that you got, you to merge into Virakar Brahma, Brahma Jyoti. They give the concept of Brahma, Nirakar Brahma. Don't go into this Devata Upasana. The result will finish. Get out of this material coverings. Nirakar Brahma. Then very rare people get attracted. Common people will not be get attracted. Common people get attracted quickly. Worship something, get something. Worship something, get something. Isn't it? This is what the whole world is doing. Not only Hindus. Muslim, Christian, everybody. Hindus say you do some pious activities, you will go to heaven, Rambha, Menaka, Apsaras are waiting for you. Right? Christians say the same things. You do pious activities, then angels are waiting for you. Right? What Christian says. Muslim says something. Uh, you do pious activities, of course their pious activities means you kill others. <laughs> Then you go to Bhaste, 72 virgin girls are waiting for you there. Clearly they say these things. Every case is the same thing. Same allurements. Uh -huh. But Jnana Kanda, no, 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 don't get into these things. We get liberation. So some people, they take interest in this. Very people get interest. This is a strive following Upanishad, the Jnana Kanda. Then, Purana comes. Veda Upana Purana. Then Purana speaks about Bhakti. Veda speaks about Karma. 
Upanishad speaks about jnana. Then Purana speaks about bhakti. Purana then teaches, no, 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 don't get into karma. Don't get into jnana. Get into bhakti. Bhagavan is not nirakar. Bhagavan is sakar. He has form, he has dham, everything. You can go there. So Purana speaks about this. Purana discourages jnana. Jnana discourages karma. Right? Jnani, jnana says, don't get into heaven. You will have problem like this. The Purana says, don't get into jnana. Why? I become free. From material bondage, I will go to Brahma Jyoti. Then Purana says, you will go to Brahma Jyoti. But Arya Kuchana Parang Padang Tatha Patanti Adha will fall down there from, from there also. Really? Yes. You will fall down from Swarga. You will fall down from Brahma Jyoti. But what is the difference? The difference is, if you fall down from a two-story building, what will happen to you? Your leg will break. Ah, fracture, handle fracture, and fall down from 50 story building? Hare Krishna. So, Purana says the same thing. You fall from Swarga, at least you will take some form. You fall from Brahma Jati, you become stone. Stone. Srila Bhaktar Mahaja is telling, when you fall from Brahma Jati, you become stone, but not ordinary stone. Huh? Diamond, uh, you said. <laughs> yeah, I said I heard from Maharaj. <laughs> Maharaj said, you know, normal stone or marble stone or granite stone, you become diamond. And Maharaj very humorously was saying, all these Ghanis, they don't become one with God, no? They don't become effulgent like God. But they can't become effulgent like God. They want some Jyoti. So God says, okay, you want to have some Jyoti? Because diamonds, you have some jyoti. Diamonds are dazzling, you know. <laughs> so, that is the situation. So, Purana encouraged people, you do bhakti. But there is a problem also with Puranas. There is a problem with Veda, problem with Upanishada, problem with Purana. Everything has very good aspect, something bad aspect. Purana spoke about bhakti, but he spoke about sakam bhakti. About Sakam Bhakti, mm. Salakya, Samipa, Sasti, all these things, you go to there, you can see Bhagavan, you can have a form like Bhagavan, you can have Aishwarya like Bhagavan, you can say next to Bhagavan, things like this. Then finally, after Purana, there comes Bhagavatam. So first is Vedic Yuga, then Darshan Yuga, Pauranic Yuga, then that is Bhagavata Dharma, Bhagavata Yoga. That spoke about Niskam Bhakti. Not like other Puranas, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, the Chaturbarga, but that Purana includes Chaturbarga, you go to Vaikuntha. Veda speaks about Dharma, go to Swarga, Dharma, Artha. Then Upanishad speaks. Do dharma but moksha. Purana speaks do dharma but go to Vaikuntha. And then but Bhagavat speaks, no, no, all, not all these things. Niskam bhakti. Bhagavat speaks niskam bhakti. But if you analyze Bhagavatam, the essence of Bhagavatam is prema bhakti, which is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. This prema bhakti. Purana Sakam Bhakti, Bhagavatam Niskam Bhakti, then essence of Bhagavatam is Prem Bhakti. So Sakam Bhakti means Bhagavan, you give me, then I'll worship you. Isn't that it? All our Hindus are very fond of worshipping God. But as long as God giving something, others nobody will go to Shiva temple, Kali temple, Durga temple. Anybody goes to see Shiva Kali Durga out of love and devotion, only to beg something. Then they worship some Bhagavan. Bhagavan, please give me something. If you are fortunate, get something good, thank you very much. If you get one lakh rupees, then you do ten rupee puja to Bhagavan, right? Oh yeah, finish. 
you don't get anything, oh, this Bhagavan is not good, I go to Sai Baba. Sai Baba give me something, Sai Baba not giving, go to somebody else. So this is what is going on. This is one kind of bhakti. But niskam bhakti means whether you give or you don't give. Mahapurusha spoke in Sikhyastaka. Asli sabha padaratang pinastamang adarsanat marmahata karatubha jatha tatha bhabha jathatu lampata matpranana thasta sahibha Whatever you do with me, I'll do your puja. So come, you give me, this come, you give or don't give me. But then Mahaprabhu came to teach the essence of Bhagavatam. <coughs> See, essence of Bhagavatam, you don't get essence of Bhagavatam by reading Bhagavatam. You don't get essence by reading Bhagavatam. So Bhagavatam is Bhagavan. Bhagavan doesn't reveal everybody same way. How he reveals? Je jathamang prapadjante tang tathayo bhajamiham. Bhagavatam is a literature, karma kandi the read, jnani is the read, yogi is the read, vaisnav is the read. Everybody reads Bhagavatam. But everybody understands Bhagavatam in different way. Not the same way. Bhagavatam is Bhagavan. He doesn't reveal the same way to everybody. But when you read Bhagavata with the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotee, Jāpada Bhagavata, Vaishnavara sthāne, ekanta asra kari Chaitanya charane, then the essence of Bhagavata will be revealed to you. That is Prema Bhakti. Bhagavata starts with Dharma Prajita Kaitava. Where Bhagavata Gita ends, Bhagavata starts. What is the last teaching of Krishna in Bhagavata Gita? Sarva Dharma. What for Krishna came to this material world? Huh? To, establish to establish Dharma. He came, I am Bhagavan, come, I will teach you Dharma. Then he spoke everything. But the conclusion is what he said. Give up all Dharma. Why he could have said, Sarva Adharma Paritejya Am Ekam Saranam Braja. That will sound better, no? How will any Purana, any Munishi says, give up dharma? Everybody says, you do dharma. But Krishna is the exception. <laughs> he saying, you give up dharma. He is not saying, you give up dharma. And second line is more interesting. What is second line? No, no. Second line is, Aham dham saro pape be mokhe shami. I will make you free from papa, but don't do dharma. <laughs> give up dharma. Very confusing statement so that we have to understand. So here Gita ends, Bhagavat starts. Gita ends with the uh, Sarva Dharman Paritajya and Bhagavat starts with the Dharma Prajita. So what is that Dharma Prajita? Dharma Prajita Kaitava, cheating Dharma. And what is cheating Dharma? That Bhagavata explains at the beginning, Dharma say apabargasa nartha artha upakalpate. What you have learned from now, Dharma artha kama mokhya na nartha artha, not for the purpose of artha, apabargasa. Ah. So in this way, Bhagavata he rejects what all Purana Veda Vedanta Upanishad teaches us, our Chaturbarga Chari Purushartha, Dharma artha kama mokhya. Um, Bhagavad rejects Dharma Prajita. You reject this. That's why it has been stated Prithivite Dharma Name Jatak Chu Chale. Bhagavata Kohesab Paripurna Chale. All over the world, whatever is going on in the name of Dharma, Bhagavata says they are all cheating Dharma. What is cheating Dharma? Agyana Tamere Nam Kohiye Kaitava. Dharma artha kama mokhya bantha adhisab. Veda speaks chari purushartha. Dharma artha kama mokhya bantha. The desire for dharma artha kama mokhya. That agyana tamere naam kahiye kaita. That is ignorance, darkness and cheating. Somebody trying to do dharma, dharmic, pious people. They are good. They are not bad. At least they are pious people, they are not doing adharma. 
so people respect oh he is a pious man but they are doing pious people to get some material benefit so that is not good but people trying to moksha liberation from this material world somebody doing dharma karma to stay in this material world happily that is good or somebody doing something to become free from material bondage that is good what is good dharma is good or moksha is good ha huh? loudly moksha everybody thinks like that that moksha is good but shastra says dharma artha kama moksha four are cheating cheating you know cheating and out of four the moksha is the topmost cheating 